Hello, I hope you're doing well today. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Evangelination. This is uh, Lisa Tuggle, and Evangelination is evangelizing the nation for the best and brightest future of our country, our world, and our eternal souls. And what could be more important than that? Our topic today is going right to the foundations of the new evangelization. Who is the man that Pope St. John Paul the Great identified as the first apostle of the new evangelization? Do you know? It's a man whose name you may not have heard much, but like all hidden heroes, this man indeed led an intense and powerfully fruitful life in the service of Jesus Christ, to whom he habitually turned as his divine master, that is teacher, as in a schoolmaster, <clears throat> and particularly as Jesus, the way, truth, and life for all humanity. So, who is this enigmatic person? <clears throat> None other than Blessed James Alberioni. Giacomo Alberioni. Interestingly, Blessed Alberioni was born in Alba, Italy, on April 4th. 1884. And the root word Alba, from which we get Alberioni, means white, as in the white alb that a priest wears when celebrating the Mass. So, from life in a family of poor peasant farmers in San Lorenzo di Fasano in northern Italy, young James entered the minor seminary of Bra after his junior high school studies. And after that, uh, his family labored hard to send him to the Seminary of Alba in 1900, when he was at the tender age of 16. Now, to get right to the heart of the matter, something life-changing happened to him one New Year's Eve. On the night between 1900 and 1901, at the start of the 20th century, which as we all know, saw more carnage by means of two world wars than arguably any other uh, epic in history. The fact that these wars were world wars and wielding enormously destructive bombs and artillery planes, we can venture to say that indeed the destruction and devastation of the 20th century was unprecedented in human history. So anyway, at the start of this tumultuous era, Pope Leo XIII asked the faithful of the Catholic world to remain in prayer that New Year's night. And as a seminarian, James was determined to respond with all his heart, his mind, and his will to do just that. And that night, young James had a mystical experience in prayer with Jesus in adoration before the Blessed Sacrament in the Cathedral of Alba, Italy. So what happened? We cannot say exactly what moved in the secret recesses of his heart, but we know for certain by his life and his own testimony that he conceived of an unquenchable zeal for the service of God, like St. Paul the Apostle also had in accordance with Psalm 69.9, and I quote, zeal for God's house consumes me. This psalm is recalled at the time of Jesus' zealous cleansing of the temple and is noted in John 2, 17. And also, uh, you know, St. Paul refers to this psalm in his letter to the Romans, chapter 15, around verse 3. So, like St. Paul, young James, the seminarian, conceived from the flame of the heart of Jesus himself a call to do something for the people of the new century. In that four-hour-long colloquy with Jesus, exposed in the Blessed Sacrament, James Alberioni gave his life for the salvation of the souls of the people of this new century. Now, 
He was ordained in 1907 at the age of 23, at which time he continued to search for God's will to tell him what to do for the people of the new century. And at that time, it welled up strongly within him that there was a need to use the modern mass media to bring the gospel to everyone. And so he began a very popular newspaper ministry. And although his new and bold approach to evangelization was questioned by some of the more conservative people of his day, a second powerful encounter with God ensured him he was on the right path. Apparently, he fell sick with a life-threatening illness from which he was not only miraculously healed, they thought he was going to die, but he lived, but he was also revived with a message from his healer ringing in his heart and mind. And this was the message which he received in prayer, once again, before the Eucharistic Lord in adoration. Jesus said to him, Do not be afraid. I am with you. From here, from the tabernacle, I want to enlighten. Be sorry for sin. So when later he became the founder of no less than ten religious congregations and secular institutes, Blessed James Alberioni had these very words inscribed on the walls in all the chapels of all those religious institutes, which incidentally have thrived in many countries to this day, and which are collectively known as the Pauline family of religious congregations and secular institutes of consecrated life. This is what Jesus said, do not be afraid. I am with you from here, that is the tabernacle. I want to enlighten, be sorry for sin. Well, that is certainly what Blessed Alberioni henceforth did. He became an intrepid, fearless pioneer in evangelization. He trusted that Christ was with him, even in, or especially in, states of extreme financial challenge. He made the daily holy hour or, quote, the visit, as it is called uh, in the Pauline family, a mandatory, mandatory part of daily life for all Paulines, his spiritual children, members of the ten branches of the Pauline tree. And he lived a life of penitential sorrow, not only for his sins, but for the sins of the world, and especially the sins committed because of the proliferation of bad example and falsehoods disseminated through the modern media of social communications. So even back then, there was fake news. And that is why he dedicated all of his priestly energy to utilizing all the newest, most modern means of social communication for the purpose of building the temple of God in each and every human person he could reach. He knew that human beings are happiest being in right relationship with the living God. And he sought by his work, his prayers, and his many physical and moral sufferings to make that good news resound throughout the world. And that is in fact what he did with his life. And when the hour came for him to pass from this life in 1971 at the age of 87, who do you think was at his side? None other than the Pope himself. Pope St. Paul VI, the great prophet of the 20th century, who still teaches us today about human life in his encyclical Humanae Vitae. Pope St. Paul VI, whose new feast day, by the way, is tomorrow, May 29th, this Pope held Blessed Alberioni in high esteem, so much so that he was at his bedside before Alberioni died. And he had this to say about him, and I quote, this is about Blessed Alberioni, what uh, Pope Paul VI said. He said, there he is, humble, silent, tireless, always vigilant and recollected in his thoughts, which run from prayer to action, always intent on scrutinizing the signs of the times, that is, 
the most creative ways to reach souls. Our Father Alberioni has given the Church new instruments with which to express herself, new means to give vigor and breadth to her apostolate, new capacities and a new awareness of the validity and possibilities of this mission in the modern world with modern means. Dear Father Alberioni, allow the Pope to rejoice in your long, faithful, and tireless work and in the fruits it has produced for the glory of God and the good of the Church. Paul VI, writing about Blessed Alberioni. The Father James Alberioni was declared venerable, the first step in the process of canonization, in June of 1996. He was beatified by another great Pope, Pope John Paul II, on April 27, 2003. And he is a great intercessor for you and me, especially as evangelizers born to be dedicated as he was for this purpose, for the people of the 21st century. John Paul II described Blessed James Alberioni, and I quote, the first apostle of the new evangelization. Blessed James Alberioni, pray for us. That's all for now. Don't hesitate to reach out to us at Evangelination on Facebook, and be sure to visit us at the Pauline Community of St. Joseph on the World Wide Web. All right, have a splendid day. Bye now.